Hello everyone, this is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com. Here to do your weekly angel card reading for Monday, March 12th through Sunday, March 18th, 2018. For this week's weekly reading, we'll be using the Power Archangel Tarot deck by Doreen Virtue for your main message. And this week, depending on your stone of choice, your special message card will come from the Archangel Divination deck also by Doreen Virtue. So this week's weekly reading takes us into the middle of March. If you haven't already, be sure to go back to my channel under Colleen Lama and watch the monthly angel card reading for the month of March to get an overall overview of the astrological, numerological, and universal energies. So let's start by taking a look at your stones of choice. Your first stone of choice is amethyst. Now I'm going to ask that you just go ahead and go with your guidance and your intuition and your feelings as far as choosing your stone of choice. As I'm doing this uh, recording, I'm actually still in Michigan and doing this recording for this week's weekly video just a little bit early because I'm going to be heading off to Southern Oregon on March 7th. And I know it's going to be a flurry of activity and trying to get organized when I'm there. So I'm not going to probably have time right away to you know get to the weekly readings, which is why I'm doing this one a little bit early. and as I'm packing and taking care of all of my details I don't have a lot of time to just kind of write out descriptions for you but again a lot of you know what amethyst is I can tell you that it's associated with the crown chakra um, and you know, all that the crown chakra is about which is of course opening yourself up to higher awareness but again go with your intuition you know your angels and guides want you to just kind of start practicing with what feels right for you what are you drawn to this is such a beautiful amethyst piece I found it as I was you know preparing and, and packing it was kind of packed away already but I pulled it out for today's reading as I did for all of these stones all these stones I haven't used in a while because they were kind of packed away since the fire that I went through last uh, May 2017 in my old apartment. So here we have your second stone of choice, and this is a beautiful piece of amber. And I can tell you again that the amber is associated with the solar plexus chakra. I can say your solar plexus chakra is about your sense of personal power, owning your power, empowerment, and of course, you know, self-confidence. So again, this is a beautiful piece of amber. And a lot of times amber is yellow in color. This one's a yellow orange color. It kind of, it can range in color from yellow to orange and even green amber is sometimes uh, bought in jewelry and, and, and sold in pieces. So again, the second stone of choice is amber. And your third stone of choice is beautiful turquoise. And of course, it's a turquoise color. So we know that turquoise color is associated with the throat chakra, speaking your truth, and not just speaking your truth, but speaking it with compassion and love and sensitivity. And it's also associated with, you know, speaking, teaching, writing, all those things that we use our voice for, that we use our, our words and thoughts and ideas for. So again, this is a beautiful piece of turquoise. So again, your stones of choice are the amethyst, the amber, and the turquoise. So let's start by talking about the astrology for the week. There's a couple things going on here. The first thing is on Tuesday the 13th. There's actually two things happening here. Uh, the first is that Venus, which is the planet that rules love and relationships, it's the planet that rules money and finances, it has recently gone into the sign of Aries, the first sign of the zodiac, which is about initiation and new beginnings. That happened on March 6th, but now Venus and Aries is making a challenging aspect here on Tuesday the 13th to the planet Saturn, which is in Capricorn. Now Saturn can be the great teacher, Saturn can be considered the Lord of Karma, Saturn can be seen as restrictions and limitations, and a need to have patience as things develop. So with Venus challenging Saturn, there may be some, you know, um, I want to say issues, if you will, in relationship matters or finances. Now, again, Saturn is about delay. So whatever this might mean, if you're dealing with money and finances, there just might be a little bit of a delay for some reason. Maybe you're waiting for your refund to come in with your taxes. 
and you've been expecting it. This is again maybe causing some sort of delay that's occurring here for a few days. In relationships, again, it can bring about some karmic lessons, some needs to kind of work through something. I have the sense that Venus here, the Divine Feminine, wants to uh, show her confidence and her independence because she's in the sign of Aries. And so that might cause a little bit of conflict in relationship if you're used to playing the other role or if the other person is not used to you being that confident, independent kind of person. Um, and then the other thing that's happening on Tuesday the 13th is the Sun is in a positive aspect to Jupiter. Now both the Sun and Jupiter are in water signs, which is about our emotions, our feelings, the spiritual realm. It's about going with the flow and being receptive. The Sun is in Pisces and Jupiter is in Scorpio. Now the Sun is about our self-identity and you know when the Sun is in Pisces because it's about our personality and our identity, it's you know, it almost has a little bit more of a confusing feeling to it because we're connecting with that spiritual energy of Pisces. So it's a little bit more floaty. It's a little bit more obscure. You know, we might not really know uh, exactly who we are in, in this moment, you know, for these few days while it's in Pisces or what we're supposed to be doing. We might even feel a little uh, ungrounded um, or, you know, maybe not remembering things or, you know, things of that nature. But again, it's a temporary thing as the sun moves through that sign of Pisces. It's positively affecting or positively, positively connecting with Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of expansion, so it expands whatever energies that it touches. It's in the sign of Scorpio, so it's expanding these energies regarding empowerment versus disempowerment and secrets and power and control and, and maybe abuse in some way. Now, I don't think that those negatives of that Jupiter and Scorpio is going to be in this particular aspect with the sun because, again, it's a positive connection. I almost feel like with Venus and Aries, and even though it's challenging Saturn, again, I'm talking about the divine feminine feeling stronger, like women taking their power back. And I feel like almost a similar feeling with the sun in a positive connection with Jupiter and Scorpio is that it's expanding the sense of spiritual power within people. And Jupiter is also known as the planet of blessings. And so this positive connection with the sun shining its light upon Jupiter, the planet of blessings, can bring some sort of unexpected perhaps, or maybe expected, blessings, gifts, or opportunities into your life. So be open to what that might be. The other thing happening this week is on Saturday the 17th. Actually, there's again two things happening on that day. The first is that we have a new moon at 26 degrees of Pisces. Now Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac which means that our next new moon is going to be in Aries next month in April, and we're definitely waiting for that because that's really the initiation of a new beginning. But now with the new moon at 26 degrees Pisces, we're in that last phase of going with the flow and allowing and doing healing work and tapping into our spiritual higher soul self and the idea or energy of unconditional love and compassion and mysticism. So there can be a lot of healing associated with this new moon, especially because this new moon is connecting with Chiron, the wounded healer in Pisces. So, you know, especially because of that. And so I would pay attention to a day or two before that new moon, Thursday, especially Friday, and uh, on the few hours Saturday before the new moon happens, pay attention to that dark of the moon phase when there's going to be a huge healing that's occurring with that connection to Chiron. And then again, when the new moon comes together um, with Chiron, there's an in initiation or a new beginning to our sense of healing and letting go and releasing the past, purging old energies, what we no longer need. There might be some patterns that we're going through that uh, are healed, maybe through conversations with others, maybe through our dream time as Chiron does ru rule our dream time. So really pay attention to your dreams around this time as well. Mars, the other thing happening is Mars, the planet of energy and action. Now, Mars is a fire planet, and it's recently been in the sign of Sagittarius, a fire sign. So if you look back the last few weeks while Mars has been in Sagittarius, there's been a lot of flurry of activity, a lot of action, things ungrounded, things chaotic, you know, because again, fast moving fire energy. But now on the 17th and after the new moon in Pisces, Mars moves into Capricorn, which is an earth sign. So it's going to be more grounded. 
The sign of Capricorn is about our goals or our ambitions. It rules our life path, destiny path, career path. It rules working hard towards our goals, you know, taking those steps towards our goals. So Mars is, you know, it, it's going to slow down as far as the chaotic effect of when Mars was in Sagittarius, but it's going to now take steps, grounded steps, focused steps towards our goals, especially if they concern a career path or life path or destiny path in some way. Mars is going to be in the sign of Capricorn until May 16th, so that's quite a bit of time, almost uh, about two months here. So you'll have quite a bit of time to kind of take those steps and move forward. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what the message from our angels and guides are from the uh, Power Archangel Tarot deck. Okay, so the first card, this is interesting. This is the Eight of Gabriel, which in the traditional tarot deck is like the Eight of Fire. Now, this card is very familiar, and I think we had it in last week's weekly reading. It was either the last week's weekly reading, or it might have been the monthly reading for March, but I remember in doing the last couple of videos that this card came up. It always means a flurry of activity happening, um, a lot of things going on. You can see this with the angel in the middle. There's eight birds around her of different colors flying around, no particular pattern. The number eight is about empowerment. It's also about money in our career as well. So there might be a lot of activity or a lot of things happening, a lot of things that are coming in, new opportunities or meetings or messages, juggling things regarding life in general. The message at the bottom says a great deal of activity, sudden and immediate results, and important communication. So like I said, any kind of networking, meetings, communication, and this can be from other people, but it can also be messages from your angels and guides, messages from spirit. Um, pay attention to those. I want to say fl flashes of insight. This is like quick flashes of insight, inspirational insight, just kind of flicking in. Uh, really quick and really fast because it's again the fire element so uh, it looks like you know even though we're leading up to um, the new moon later this week it seems like there's still a busy kind of energy i want to say it's because mars is in the last you know the last degree or two this week of the sign of sagittarius before moving into capricorn on saturday so we're starting out the week with that heightened energy of sagittarius as it's going to be moving out of that sign so there's going to be a lot of things happening a lot of things taking place let's take a look at the second card for the week and then turning that over we get okay this is really super interesting because this is the night of gabriel and again, I have a recollection that both the Eight of Gabriel and the Knight of Gabriel was in a previous reading that we very recently did, but I think they were in the opposite order. I think the Knight of Gabriel in the previous reading came first and the Eight of Gabriel came second. So this is really interesting because in obviously shuffling uh, the cards and, you know, we have many cards in the whole tarot deck. Uh, 78 cards to choose from and we have the same two cards coming out uh, either two weeks in a row or again maybe it was the monthly reading I'm sure some of you remember the message at the top or the key words at the top of this card says confident enthusiastic courageous charismatic and the message at the bottom says take or excuse me time to take action okay so it's time to take action great passion for a cause and then it says instinctively knowing just what to do. Again, that instinctively knowing just what to do is that fire element, that Mars in Sagittarius in the beginning of the week until Saturday. Sagittarius is very intuitive and instinctual. It, it has, again, these flashes of insight and knowingness, uh, you know, even pictures, clairvoyance of seeing what needs to be done and knowing what needs to be done. So again, a fi two fire cards in a row means lots of activity lots of passion lots of energy that's happening at least in the first part of the week so if we take the messages from both the cards again the eight of gabriel a great deal of activity the knight of gabriel time to take action so really um, move forward on whatever your plans are you know maybe you're having plans regarding career money um, relationship moving uh, just as i am moving across the country or as i do this reading i should already be settling in, at, into my new place in southern oregon but you know again there's a lot that's happening here a lot of passionate energy and a lot of um, a lot of things that are happening 
You can see the knight on the horse here moving forward. Usually the knight of Gabriel is shown galloping forward in this particular card. I guess he's like at a, at a very um, calm kind of gallop moving forward, but usually it's fast movement. And then the last card for the week. Okay, we have Major Arcana number 14, which in this deck is called Solutions. In the traditional tarot deck, it's called Temperance. And this is with Archangel Zadkiel. Now, the interesting thing about Major Arcana number 14 is that the month of March actually relates to the 14th Major Arcana. It actually vibrates numerologically to the number 14 because we're in an 11 universal year, 2018, if we add the digits, equals an 11. We add that to the third month of March, so the number 3, 11 plus 3, and that is 14. So it's interesting that we have the 14th Major Arcana here. The message at the bottom says, success that comes from objective compromise, self-control and patience, forgiving and healing energy. And that's usually what the temperance card uh, means in the tarot. It's about staying balanced, staying patient, you know, getting ready to move forward. Um, but, you know, it, it might, it's like, it's like taking the steps or t paying attention to the details of what needs to change um, to move forward. So we're getting ready, you know, as we have been, and we're always moving forward, but we're getting ready to move forward in some way. And so again, it's like staying balanced, staying patient while things are developing, while things are like rebalancing or reorganizing or, or, or the timing becomes more right um, for us to actually move forward. Again, have self-control, have patience. And again, using the idea of compromise is going to be you know, something that's most successful for you. Now, again, the message at the end is talking about forgiveness and healing energy. And again, we have that new moon in Pisces connecting with Chiron, the wounded healer. And this is the card that ends our week's reading. So we're definitely needing to offer forgiveness to circumstances in our life, to other people, relationships in our life, but also to yourself, you know, to not hold any negatives towards yourself for the past, um, you know, whether it be a present situation in your now life, or again, the past or even previous lifetime situations. So uh, a time of, of healing and staying balanced. All right, so let's take a look at your special message card, depending on your stone of choice. So again, we have the Archangel divination deck, and I'm going to just close my eyes here and take a little breath and shuffle. This one was also uh, just good about to fall out as I was shuffling. So this is going to be for Amethyst people. Amethyst people, creative writing with Archangel Gabriel. Make time to write down your thoughts in a journal or pen, an article, or a book. Now, I just feel like Archangel Gabriel is, you know, like the main focus of this card. Archangel Gabriel helps people that are speakers or teachers or writers. Um, this is about all forms of communication and messages coming in. So I feel like the most important message here is to call on Archangel Gabriel, whether it be that you're needing some sort of guidance or some sort of message, or again, maybe you're a teacher, maybe you're trying to finish a book, maybe you're needing to build a website and you're trying to find the right words to, to put in that. You know, it's, it's again, all about some sort of creative self-expression here. Um, I feel like there's something about personal power as well, not necessarily that that goes with what this card says or with Archangel Gabriel um, in general, but I feel like there's something about empowering yourself. Maybe it's speaking your truth. So maybe it's using your words and speaking your truth as far as taking your power back or empowering yourself in some way. Now, this could also be about the flurry of activity that's happening. There's so much going on that, again, write your thoughts down means like write a list, make a list. I've had to do that, you know, right before my move of what needs to get done. You know, every time I think of something, I add it to the list because I didn't want to forget to do anything. So I feel like, you know, with, with whatever's going on in your life, you might want to, again, make that organized list of taking the steps or what needs to be done and what timing they need to be done, etc., etc. All right, so let's take a look at the message for, and you know, right away I see this one sticking out. This is going to be for Amber people, so I'm going to pull that out. Amber, you know what to do. I love this card. You know what to do with Archangel Uriel. 
and it says trust your inner knowledge and act upon it without delay interestingly enough Archangel Uriel is the Archangel that for one um, helps us with claircognizance and gives us kind of divine inspiration like uh, little flashes of insight as I was talking about earlier with the two fire cards the eight of Gabriel the knight of Gabriel being that kind of fire element again Mars being in Sagittarius for the early part of this week that has that that flash of intuition and insight and here your message is paying attention to or calling in Archangel Uriel to assist you in intuiting what your next step is what to do next and it actually says you know what to do meaning you already know intuitively you already have a feeling you already have seen it or felt it or you know just know it to be so really just pay attention to your intuition I feel like uh, you know here Archangel Uriel is holding a lamp with a flame in it you're being led it's like your path is being highlighted okay so you're um, kind of being led along the way down your path it's it's each step that you're supposed to take each decision you're supposed to, to make is going to be highlighted in some way for you to see know or understand so trust trust your inner intuition here all right and then for those of you that chose the turquoise let's give this a little shuffle and we're looking for turquoise and this one's calling my attention here turquoise people clear your space with Archangel Jophiel and the message at the bottom says get rid of clutter clear the energy around you and use feng shui okay now Archangel Jophiel is the Archangel of beauty and that's why she's talking about clearing your space now this could be actually you know clearing your your space like doing a purge um, I gotta come back to another message they're talking about here so hopefully I won't forget it you know this could be about purging your home purging your office you know purging a part of your home you know a bedroom or office etc so I feel like you know getting rid of clutter and clearing your space to create more beauty and actually beautifying the space again through feng shui um, I will say that when you enter a room or an office in a particular doorway the farthest back left hand corner is the prosperity and abundance corner and the farthest back right hand corner of where you enter a room or your home or your office is the relationship corner so you know of course there's all different uh, areas of, of room and corners and whatnot to pay attention to in feng shui but those two you know most people are really interested in your prosperity and abundance and your relationship corner so clear the clutter out of there beautify it maybe make a vision board put a vision board up um, put flowers or a fountain or you know anything that can help the flow of energy in that particular space now let me see if I can get back to the other message that they were talking about um, also oh yes the other message that came in was that it's about clearing your own physical body so you're clearing your own physical and energetic body of anything toxic you know any foods or drinks lower vibrational so eating more clean organic vegetarian or vegan drinking purified water um, you know and really clearing your body mind and soul this could include meditation getting out in nature breathing in the fresh air of nature so you're wanting to clear your space your space around you and within you as well let me see if there's anything else here okay that's all I'm getting for that card so you know this was a very you know it's an uplifting reading and again we're moving into that time period of uh, new moon energy planting new seeds after uh, Saturday the 17th um, you know plant the new seeds on a spiritual level you know again it's a Pisces new moon so you may not see the actual physical sprouting until we get to the new moon in Aries next month but you can start to visualize you can create in your mind and visualize and intend imagine if you will which is all Pisces energy where it is you want to go what it is you want to do who it is you want to be and again make sure you're doing a lot of good inner healing work so I hope you've liked this weekly angel card reading um, I should again at this point in time that you're listening to this reading should be getting settled now in my new place in Southern Oregon so um, I will be available very soon again through my website sacred soul empowerment for readings healings and other types of sessions so 
And of course, I should be still doing uh, things on Facebook, so you can always contact me there as well. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for all your love and support. Thank you for all your well wishes for my move across the country. Um, and I send you all many, many angel blessings and much love and light. Mm -hmm.